It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Welcome to another production here from the Open Mic Broadcast Network and the Mike Prince Show. You can follow me on X at the Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It is our desire to try to bring you some news that you can use. And today is no exception to that rule. So, with all that being established, let us jump right into today's episode. The hottest name on the HBCU head football coaching circuit right now, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is Chennis Berry. Currently serving as the head football college coach of Benedict. Phenomenal season, came up a bit short in the playoffs, but he is still a hot commodity. He has right now his pick of the litter of four known openings in the HBCU circuit, starting with South Carolina State, followed closely by Southern University, then the likes and the ranks of Texas Southern, and we cannot forget the possibilities of Grambling State University. Reports have been indicating that Coach Barry was offered the position from South Carolina State as recent as last week, but he's been sitting and waiting patiently. Some say trying to see what, if any, possibility that Southern University would pony up to see if they could lure Barry back home. And then we can't forget the great opportunity that lies if he were to come to Houston. We did a survey last week asking between Texas Southern, Southern, and Grambling, which were more appealing to our listeners. They said they thought that the Texas Southern job, then the Southern job, followed by Grambling, all in that order, would be probably the best place to land where you could get winning in line soon as possible. So now it's going to be determined. Here's another factor that you might want to consider. If the ultimate goal is to get to the celebration bowl, which would be the path of the least resistance? If we look at the schools that are available in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, Texas Southern, Southern, Gramlin, the road through the West has been proven to be a very, very tough road to travel. Now, it's not taking anything away or trying to take the easy way out, but if we are seeking the path of the least resistance, the way to get to the Celebration Bowl in the most expeditious way, I would have to think that the MEAC route would be the route to go. The MEAC, of course, has six teams, which means you're going to have a total of five conference games that are going to make or break your ultimate goal of reaching the Celebration Bowl. Do you take that path? Or do you become lured by the potentials of coming home to the sweet nectar of being on the bluff at Southern? Or do you even take the adventurous dive into coming to Houston, Texas to try to build what it appears that no man has been able to build since the days of Johnny Football Cole at Texas Southern University? One thing that is for sure that whichever route Coach Barry decides to go will begin the domino fall because we cannot forget the potentials of an Eric Dooley and let us not ignore the possibilities of Fred McNair. It has been reported that Fred McNair is highly motivated and so are the Texas Southern Tigers. Now, if there's any concrete evidence to that, whisperings have become a little bit more vocal, and it all depends. Some are still saying that Coach McNair 
is using Texas Southern as a potential negotiation piece. We'll see how all this comes out soon and very soon. Meanwhile, there is a championship football game to be played December 16th between the FAMU Rattlers and the Howard Bison. We know that Howard comes in with an overall record of 6-5. and five. FAMU will come in with an overall record of 11-1. and one. And looking at the pedigree of Coach Willie Simmons and the Rattler Nation, you would have to think that FAMU will be coming into this game highly favored to complete the task of receiving the crown for the HBCU Football Kings for 2023. Nonetheless, it should be a very competitive game. Can't wait to see how it all unfolds. And in other HBCU football news, there has been a lot of whispering of the possibilities of going back and tweaking the Celebration Bowl goal, if you will, uh, by having a little playoff run between MEAC and SWAC programs. And the only problem that will cause all this to never happen is two words, the Bayou Classic. Because of the Bayou Classic and the money that it brings to Southern and Grambling, that will never, ever be able to be removed from those two institutions because of a playoff. That's why we have what we have right now. Because of the Bayou Classic, the FCS playoffs are literally out of the window for the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And that's not a bad thing. That's why we can't get into a huff and puff situation when one of our Southwestern Athletic programs have a phenomenal year and they fall short to the goals of making it to the SWAG championship, then they want to get an at-large bid from FCS. We forfeited that right when we decided we did not want to be a part of it. We gave up our automatic bid so we could have the Bayou Classic, so we could have the SWAC championship game. And I'm okay with that. A lot of the uh, uh, ruckus and, and complaining that we need to get rid of East and West divisions for the Southwestern Athletic Conference and just let the best two records, you know, play for the championship game. Just let all that other stuff dissolve. And to be quite honest with you, that foul play started first from FAMU and now followed up this year by Jackson State because, yes, they've had some phenomenal seasons these last three to four seasons, but the rules are the rules. It's just like that nonsense that they've done with the college playoffs, you know, and I won't get too entrenched with that because I don't have a dog in that hunt. But when when you have Alabama making it, and I know America's team is Alabama, roll tide, but when you have three undefeated programs and the only one loss program beat Alabama head to head, it's really a no brainer. But that's not, as I say, my, my fight to be focused on. But as far as the HBCU realm is concerned, I think that the way things are situated, they're situated quite fine. Now, if you want to try to, to change the narrative of the MEAC, there's no need to change the narrative of the MEAC because the way they have it structured, it works. It makes every game matter even more because with the way things are set up with the college playoff system right now, well, it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season. If you're the popular choice, then they lobby and pay whoever they need to pay to get put into the playoff system. Even though it's advancing to 12 teams next season, it's still going to create a bubble and, and controversy, if you will. But the way it's structured in the HBCU landmark, 
whether you like it or not, whoever the top seed from the East will play the top seed from the West to determine who is the SWAG champion. And the way it's set up in the MEAC, you win the games in your conference, and who's ever at top at the end of the season for the MEAC, they represent the MEAC. And I think it works just fine. So all that other stuff, and that's part of the problem why we have some of the challenges that we have on the HBCU level. We're looking over and seeing what everybody else is doing when we need to be fine and content in our own skin, accept our uniqueness, accept what makes us so wonderfully and and, and, and marvelously made, and embrace that and make the most of it. But who am I? I'm just an old man crying, get off my lawn, right? But we appreciate it, and we appreciate you for joining in with us each and every day. I want to remind you that you can follow me on X at The Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We have a 24-hour stream available on the website at obnradio.com. Now, many of you may or may not be aware that we have been providing student athletic coverage since 2002 and we have a ton of old games high school college baseball softball football volleyball some soccer basketball the whole nine yard and we have been doing some extensive as they say recalibrating and uh organizing of all of these games, we have over 1,500 games that we've broadcast. And we're going to start slowly releasing some of these oldies but goodies from all gamuts. And it's just uh, really brought back a lot of great memories. And we're going to share some of those memories with you guys. As a matter of fact, um, you could, if you would, respond to this particular podcast if that's something that you would even be interested in, you know, you can always go to the website, obnradio.com, hit that contact us information and send us an email that way. Or you can respond to the YouTube comment section at Open Mic Broadcast Network. And you can even send me a direct message by way of X at the Mike Prince Show. So let us know. Get on that horn and see if that's something that you would be interested in. I do know that as interested as you may be, that I've come to where I must exit stage left for today. And again, we thank you guys for joining in with us. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. And until the next time, you guys be blessed and we'll see you on the other side.